Widowmaker players who have wanted a skin might be very happy. They'll be, very they'll be pleased about yes. this one. Okay, <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa, and we are getting a absolutely insane Widowmaker skin with the Uprising update. At least that's what Jeff keeps telling us. So this thing is probably going to blow my mind. If it doesn't, it's been hyped up to high heaven. I, I don't even know what I'm going to do. So what the hell, what the hell, ladies and gentlemen, could this skin actually be? And why would Jeff be so, well, interested in telling people we're getting this new skin? Like, he must love it, as he wouldn't keep talking about it. So it must be something, well, it must be something different, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? If we look at the teaser for uh, Uprising, well, there's a very interesting thing here. Entered into record seven years ago. Now, we know this is an event which happened in the past. This is an old Overwatch mission that happened seven years ago. So does that mean we're about to get a Widowmaker skin, which is... Well, not purple. Could we be about to get an Amelie Lacroix skin? I've butchered your name. I'm sorry, Widowmaker. I can't speak French. My, my French accent is terrible. I'm not going to try and do it. But is that what we're about to get, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let's take a look at the history of uh, Widowmaker and what she's all about. Because there is a massively strong teaser as to the fact that we're probably getting a pre-Widowmaker skin in the Uprising comic. Anyway, before we get to that, let's learn about Widowmaker. So in her former life, Widowmaker was married to Gerard Lacroix, an Overwatch agent spearheading operations against the Talent Terrorist Organization. After several unsuccessful attempts to eliminate Gerard, Talon decided to change its focus to his wife, Amelie. Talon operatives kidnapped her and subjected her to an intense program of neural reconditioning. So they basically brainwashed her, ladies and gentlemen. They broke her will, suppressed her personality, and reprogrammed her as a sleeper agent. She was eventually found by Overwatch agents, apparently none the worse for wear, and returned to her normal life. Two weeks later, she killed Gerard in his sleep. Her mission complete, Amelie returned to Talon and completed the process of turning her into a living weapon. She was given extensive training in covert arts and then her physiology was altered, drastically slowing her heart, which turned her skin cold and blue and numbed her ability to experience human emotion. Amelie was gone, replaced by Widowmaker, Talon's most effective assassin. So, with all that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at this from the actual Overwatch Uprising comic. Now, if you look at this, it's got bits of information in the background. Blackwatch under scrutiny com uh, after complaint from Japanese government. Overwatch anti-program. Overwatch official murdered. This is the interesting one. An Overwatch official has been murdered. And if you look below, that looks like sniper scope kind of footage. Could that be, well, Amelie killing Gerard? Well, we're not actually sure how she killed him. Like, maybe she killed him with poison. Maybe she just choked him i don't know but all we know is she killed him in his sleep she could have sniped him in the head in his sleep that seems rather ridiculous we think she probably just well i think she probably just poisoned him or something like that but we don't know but the most interesting thing here is an overwatch official which i think is gerard was killed just just ladies and gentlemen as the mission for overwatch uprising begins as they go into king's row to presumably rescue mandata from the ridiculous north sector robots and sort out that entire well Omnic Uprising, which is going on in King's Row. Now, if that is true, ladies and gentlemen, that means Widowmaker is not purple. That means that if I, again, quote this section here of Widowmaker lore, the mission complete, Amelie returned to Talon, and they completed the process of turning her into a living weapon. She was given extensive training in the covert arts. Her physiology was altered, drastically so slowing her heart, which turned her skin cold blue. So before any of this happened, before, I mean, she's she. the timelines are aligning, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm trying to say, right? They are aligning. She kills Gerard during the Uprising comic. Uprising is the event which is about to hit Overwatch. Uprising has an amazing Widowmaker skin. Therefore, it cannot be a purple Widowmaker skin if it is based in the same timeline. Now, it might not be, but that would be completely stupid considering what the event is. And I'm pretty sure if we don't get that Genji skin for a start, I mean, that looks insane. Holy hell, that is an old school Genji. There will be riots on the internet, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. Is this going to be Widowmaker? Will she look like this? Now, this is courtesy of Reddit user the Brian of Brian. Uh, he recolorized this image quite a few months ago. But are we about to see a non-purple 
Widowmaker. You know what? I really hope we are because the potential for this type of stuff is ridiculous. Like, not only the lore potential, making players more invested in the characters, because that's what this will do. If you play Widowmaker, I like to play Widowmaker. Um, I want this skin. I really, really want this skin. But like I said at the start of this video, Widowmaker skins, they're actually pretty good anyway. But I, I, just to get a skin from the past opens up an entire whole sort of area of skins and of, of development for the game. Like I said, that Genji skin, which looks completely ridiculous in the comic, if that is not in this game, people will not be happy or in this update people will not be happy but even if it isn't you can see that being released later on down the line and look at the other skins as well we've got the overwatch specific sort of reinhardt skin and uh all the, all the standard sort of um overwatch costumes like the, the overwatch uniform if you will that's they're probably going to be epic skins or at least i hope they will be because we're going to be playing as those people in the playable event no doubt and uh why wouldn't we be looking the part it looks silly if we're running around with like you know um whatever reinhardt skin we've got on or whatever but we're gonna have to see how this plans out but this is honestly a really awesome thing to me because i've always wanted lore in this game playable lore i wanted the story to be taken forward in terms of in-game seasonal events and like jeff said you players will be very happy with this event because this event is we've been listening to the community and we know you guys want this now I can kind of say to myself, look, yes, I, everybody's been asking for this. Blizzard, I don't think Blizzard, um, is it fair of me to say this? I doubt that they've sat there and thought, hey, um, we're not never, ever, ever going to do in-game law related events. It was probably always the plan. And maybe it's convenient to sort of say, hey, yes, guys, we've been listening to your feedback. We don't know, right? I mean, that's like speculation on my part. But the fact is, this could be the next era of Overwatch. And I'm not being over the top with this or anything like that. What I'm saying is, this is, it opens up Overwatch to a whole other audience, a whole other type of player. Now, there are loads of different people watching this video right now. All you guys play different kinds of Overwatch. I play competitive. I mean, look at me, right? I play competitive Overwatch and I play it on a few different accounts. That's what I do. There are people who just play quick play. There are people who play quick play and a bit of competitive. There are people who play the arcade. There are people who play only quick play. There are people who play 1v1, 3v3, capture the flag. There's so many different people within Overwatch, but there is another group of people. And these are people who will play PvE content. I am in that group. I can honestly see myself being a competitive and PvE player if Overwatch gets a fleshed out PvE system. Now, this is quite clearly going to be the first solid test of this. The Junkenstein's Revenge event, that was a great event. That was awesome. It showed how PvE can actually work in Overwatch. It shows how having team sizes below six can work as well. And after that, we started to see the sort of like 1v1 and the 3v3 kind of stuff came out. Maybe they looked at that and thought, hey, this actually works quite well. Maybe we can use that kind of mentality in other game modes. Who knows? But again, that was probably already planned because the way games are developed, especially Overwatch, is I think they pretty much know what they're going to be doing like more than a year in advance. Like they know what the events are going to be. They're working on events extremely far in advance because all of this stuff takes tons and tons of time and effort to work on. So this is probably going to be absolutely ridiculous. If it sort of opens up the first test of PvE content within Overwatch that actually has a point, which is actually trying to tell Overwatch story. That's what I want, right? I don't want um, just like, like uh, in the back of my mind, I don't want like this little sort of almost like cheap event where it's just like a mission that doesn't really mean anything and, and et cetera, et cetera. I don't think it's going to be that. I think this is going to be the start of a type of archive system, which we can load games into and like have a look at the mission and maybe play them. It's going to be sad if this playable mission ends after the uh, the Uprising event, because if it's a really great mission, I'd like to go back and keep playing it. Much like Junkenstein's Revenge, everybody was kind of a bit miffed when that disappeared. I say everybody, like maybe there were people out there that didn't like it, but on the whole, people love that event. And the Halloween um, event it was, is basically the best event the game's had. So if they're going to copy that for an in-game lore event, it could be ridiculous. But... This mission system, maybe in the future, uh, this mission system turns out to be a different type of way to play the game where you can load in sort of PvE scenarios and learn about the history of Overwatch or maybe get specific rewards for it or something like that. Because one thing we've got to remember is developing a complete campaign for Overwatch would be 
pretty much impossible. It would like, I mean, Jeff's even said this, it would take like the development of a completely new game. It would be massively resource intensive. So the best way to do this is to use the existing game, what you've got, and start introducing scenarios of which, well, this is clearly the first one and hopefully it goes down as a massive success. It looks as if they've been putting a lot of effort into the skins, like I said, and the whole point of this video has been the Widowmaker skin and the speculation around that, which I honestly believe it is not a purple Widowmaker skin. It is going to be an Amelie Lacroix skin and uh, it's going to be hopefully the start of these new sort of style of skins which are based on the old characters if that's true it means they're investing a lot into this and it means we'll probably see less sort of normal seasonal events which then begs the question what about the summer games are we going to get that this year what about the you know the, the other events maybe we're going to not get these events in the future because we've got other events taking their place because of these sort of special in-game lore events then what happens with those skins like how can like i i want the lucio emote where he's um doing kick-ups with the football like how can i get that if those events possibly it's not that they're not going to come back but that they are going to find difficult to sort of fit them in with all these other events they're doing ladies and gentlemen let me know what you think about this in the comments below specifically let me know what you think about this widowmaker skin and what it could be i think i've provided pretty strong evidence as to the fact that it's probably a pre-widowmaker skin or at least i hope it is ladies and gentlemen i've been stalosa and this is unit lost if you enjoyed the video then like the video subscribe to the channel and follow me on twitter which is at unit lost gaming and i'll catch you next time guys toodaloo